Hello there. I'm Sharon White of Copycat Cards. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to make a card that is a little unusual for me because I'm going to make a one layer card. Uh, I'd like to enter, enter into the less is more challenge on Instagram. So um, I'm going to use this wonderful stamp set that I received recently from Stampendous. It's called Coneflower and it has these beautiful images and I also received the dies that came with uh, that coordinate with the set and the set came with a stencil and when you pop out the um, little pieces from the stencil you end up with these great little masks so let's get inky I'm also going to use this background stamp on my card. Um, I received this um, fairly recently, but I can't remember where I got it from. It's um, a fun chevron background. It's made by Darcy's Heart and Home. So I'm going to set that aside. And I've already stamped my image. I stamped the largest cone flower and I masked it with the little mask and stamped the leaves and I'm going to use my um, an assortment of Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I use Versafine to stamp the image and when I do the chevron background I will use Squeeze Lemonade Distress Oxide. So here I go. A little unusual for me because I rarely make a one layer card. Less is more is a wonderful idea but not one that I subscribe to very often because I tend to be um, all about layers and color and all of that. But let's see how I do this. that the first color I use is olive green. I'm now using mid green. I tend to use these olive toned greens rather than the uh, more true green tones. The third color is yellow green. I like to wiggle and jiggle my marker. It kind of gives a little bit of a hint of texture. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to add a touch of pale green. I had already decided that I was going to make my cone flower a vivid pink one. And the first shade I'm using is dark pink. I'm using the lines on the image to guide me for um, my darker shades. I'm also putting the darkest shades where I think the shadows would be. I'm not sure if that is part of the leaf, I think it is. So let me go in there and color it before I get too, too busy and make it pink when I don't want it pink. And that means <clears throat> I need to make this a little darker. And a touch more of this yellow green. It's been so interesting to um, use these zig markers and kind of discover the cool things that they do. And um, one of the things I've learned and do a lot is uh, I use the lighter shades as a blending, as a blender. And it, it moves the darker ink and um, just does really cool things. 
All right, that's enough for the leaves. You may hear my little dog Bear barking in the kitchen. I've shut myself into my stamp studio, hoping that it would muffle him a little bit, muffle the sound of him. But um, he seems to always make his presence known anytime I try to do a video. Oh, I didn't tell you the colors. I had started with dark pink, and then I just used um, pink. And I had chosen FL pink. I don't know what that means. I'm just going to add a touch of that. And I'm going to finish that with the palest pink that I have, which is pale pink. And it's going to pick up the darker pink, so I <clears throat> remove the dark pink from my pale pink by kind of wiping it off on a little piece of scrap. I um, just received the most beautiful card in the mail today from Angelica Conrad, who um, is um, on Instagram as my love for paper. And she wrote such a wonderfully encouraging note to me. Um, it was very, very, very touching, very special to receive that from her. And... Um, I haven't really interacted very much with her other than probably commenting on her cards. Uh, right now I'm adding flesh, <clears throat> flesh color. Flesh color is one of my go-to blending colors. But anyway, um, what, a, what a wonderful surprise. What a wonderful thing to, to send a beautiful handmade card with words of encouragement to somebody and it just reminded me that I need to be more uh, mindful of doing that myself. I tend to crank out cards. I just I can't stop making cards and make them all the time. But I really need to mail them, mail them out more, because I think it's important to um, to reach out to people and to let them know how you feel. And of course, to receive something in the mail, that's always a, a really special thing nowadays. So Angelica, you may not ever watch this. I may not post it, but I just want to thank you so much for, for your thinking of me and reaching out like that. All right, well, I had just added a little touch of um, that FL pink again. And I think what I might do is use my pale gray, light gray, and um, just kind of accent the little shadows. It also will pick up the pink, so I'm gonna be wiping it off on the side. I think I will leave that. Pretty much done with these. <clears throat> now I'm going to color this part. 
with um, ochre. But I'm going to add a little bit of beige to deepen that color. I'm actually going to add a little bit of dark oatmeal. No, I don't love that color, but actually it's good. And where these little dots are on the image is where I will add the shading with the dark dark oatmeal. And I am going to, I think I'm going to just use my flesh color as a blender. I love how it picks up the other colors, but it kind of mixes them all together in a really nice way. That's good. And I'm going to add a touch of lemon yellow because my chevron background that I'm going to put over this is going to be done with squeezed lemonade. I'm going to check the color. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm just going to add a little touch of that to lighten up the center. That looks good. And I'm going to use black for these little, whatever they are, these little doodad things. I just barely touched that to, to the little doodads, and I'm going to go back over those with my um, light gray to blend the color a little bit so they're not too dark. And I'm actually... Um, going to do some of the gray over this, create a little more of a shadow. And of course the pale gray is picking up a little bit of the shades of, of tan and brown, which I like. And add little dots or a little texture. Bring some up into here and then um, deepen this down here a little bit. Uh, I think I'm going to use, um, I'm going to try adding a little green gray. Do I want that? I'm using a little bit of the um, yellowness of it, but I think I'll go back in with my flesh and just kind of pounce this up and down to soften those little dots I made. And I think I will leave well enough alone. All right, so uh, that's good. Now I'm going to use my masks again to cover these images. There's nothing sticky or tacky on them, so they're just going to lay in place. And which way does this go? How does this? Hmm. There we go. Whoops. Like that. Okay, that's close enough. <clears throat> now I had thought of um, trying to use a little water on this because actually the my card base is uh, Bristol Smooth, so I could do watery. But... 
Yeah, I think I will. Because I, I like the look of a watery thing. And um, so I just stamped that. I'm going to use um, a paper towel to kind of pull some of the ink a little bit. And I'm going to spritz this. Move this back and I hope that it's still centered. And I don't really want the whole square, so I'm going to lay this on but not let the corners touch and just kind of press it down a little bit and hope that it comes out the way I want it to. Hope there's enough of it showing. Oh, that's cool. That works. And actually, it lifted off the uh, masks. So I'm just going to set that aside. Dry my surface, my very well used craft mat that I've uh, taped out to remind me where to keep my card. And I see that there are little, little bits of um, fibers or something from from something, but that looks nice. I like that. So a quick dry. I think this is a nice cheery card. I left some white space. That's one of the um, one of the um, one of the things required in making a less is more card. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is use this uh, little paintbrush. Get it wet. I have also found that the Zig, uh, the Zig ink is reactive to water. And so I'm going to um, tap a little bit of water droplets over the flower and the leaves. And it just makes such a cool little speckled look. I love it. It moves the ink and just adds more texture. I think it's awesome. So I will dry again. Can you see what that did to those leaves? I'm gonna stand up and check my card. Make sure it's right where you need it to be so you can see it. But well, look. Do you see what the water droplets did? I just love that. It's subtle, but it's there. I think that's pretty much dry. And the last thing I'm going to do, I was thinking I would use this beautiful sentiment. It says, may flowers always line your path and sunshine light your day, but it's too big. So instead I'll use this cute little sentiment that says, hello, sunshine. I think it's appropriate for this cheery, sunny little card. Let me find the right size block. My blocks are very well used. I'm going to use VersaFine. Make sure it's inked up nicely. Right there. Hello, sunshine. There. I like it. All right, so I just made a less is more card. One layer. I left some white space and I'm satisfied, satisfied with it. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching the video and who knows, maybe you'll get this in the mail.